Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Mary Magdalene Anglican Church. I'm Mark List, the pastor. Whether you're joining us here in person or joining us through the miracle of technology online, it is great to have you with us as we offer a joyful noise unto the Lord. We are having some wonderful and beautiful weather here. We are hope you having the same. We do offer prayers for our brothers and sisters in the east that are getting slammed by yet again one more winter storm. So do remember those in your prayers. Please have your bread and wine ready to celebrate the Eucharist. Please have the bulletin down or up on your screen so you are prepared to worship. And now let us begin our worship of God with a wonderful musical offering from Esteban.
Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. <laughs> God be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from Isaiah. In the year the king Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the rats flew to me, holding a lot coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 138 responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name in the word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when you have given the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, 
He appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that had been taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So we hear the incredible voice of Peter this morning. Simon, in this story, later to be renamed Peter. Peter says, Master, wait a minute. We have worked all night long, but we've caught nothing. And it's now early in the morning. Peter is on the Sea of Galilee. It's a large freshwater lake in the northern part of Israel. It's about 700 feet below sea level. It's about 35 miles to go all the way around this lake. Peter, his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, their work, their profession, what they do for a living is they are fishermen. And they've been out all night fishing. They do what they do and they have caught nothing, which is problematic for a couple of reasons means they'll have nothing to eat this day. 
Worse, they will have nothing to sell this day in order to gain money to buy the other things that they need to live this day. Quite simply, it has not been a good night. It has not been a good time. They're cranky, they're angry, they're tired, they're hungry, and they're frustrated. They're feeling very futile. Remember, futile, incapable of producing any meaningful or useful results, that their effort is pointless. And this futility has bit by bit by bit over this difficult night of no catching fish, it has worn away. It has robbed Peter and the others of their hope. I know that robbing of hope through futility, through feeling ineffectual, through feeling that I just can't get any results in this current time and age is something familiar to me. And I know that at times it is familiar to others. And that is why this story is in Luke's gospel. Why does it matter then? Because in Peter's state of being, in his frustration at not being able to do what he's lived and trained and has his possession to do, along comes Jesus and everything changes. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a cast. Now, Simon Peter, a professional fisherman, really likes being told how to fish by this guy. And he answers, Master, being respectful, we've worked all night long and have caught nothing. And you can kind of see the roll of the eye. Yet if you say so, I'll let down the nets. And then the miracle. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And then what happened was is that both Boats became so filled with a wondrous catching of fish that they began to sink. And this in Luke's gospel is the miracle, wondrous catch of fish. Why? All because Jesus said, put out into the deep and let down your nets. And what Luke is telling them there and by extension us is follow Jesus. Do something radically different. Do whatever he tells you. Remember, that's what Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to the steward at the first miracle in the Gospel of John, the changing of the water into wine. Mary just says to the steward, I don't know how it's going to happen, but do whatever he tells you. And because Simon Peter, even in his terrible state of being, does what he's told, there is great abundance there is a wondrous catch of fish. And here this interesting detail that unless we haven't really heard the full story that Luke wants us to know. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink from so many fish. Wait a minute, this is a wonderful catch of fish and the story's gonna end up with the boat sinking. They began to sink. They're taking on water in deep water because I don't know a lot about fishing, but I used to sail quite a bit. If you sink in deep water, you are in big trouble. And for these fishermen, the boat was their primary tool of trade. It was the economic engine that provided for their lives. They needed those boats. They needed to earn a living. They needed to stay alive. But we're going to find a different end to this story. At the end of the story, we're told that they do make it back to shore. At the end of the story, we're told that Peter either overcome by this miracle or overcome by the fact that the boat didn't sink, he falls on his knees in front of Jesus and proclaims, go away from me, Lord. The messianic title for God. Go away from me because you are holy. You are God. You are mighty. You are wonderful. And I am everything that is not. Go away from me for I am a sinful man. No great discipline. No great rebuke. No great criticism from Jesus, but rather these incredible words. Don't be afraid, now or evermore. Don't be afraid. For from now on, you have a new job. And your job will be to catch people for me and for the reign of heaven. 
And then we're told, remarkably, when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Without a second thought, without packing a bag, without taking anything with them, they simply left everything, Luke wants us to know, and followed Jesus. These fishermen, Peter and his companions, that began this story cranky, hungry, angry, and frustrated, futile, almost hopeless, they don't believe there are any fish to be caught, and they certainly don't believe that they have the ability to catch them. Jesus simply says, put out into deep water, let down your nets for the catch, and everything changes. And by the end of this short encounter, this story that Luke tells us, the shame-faced group of failing fishermen, they're now courageous new evangelists. And remember, evangelist just comes from the Greek word evangelion, good news. So these guys have signed on to follow Jesus to bring the good news to everybody. They have become Christ followers. And this road from failure as a fisherman to evangelist, good news bringer, is really short and very simple. It simply required them to say yes to Jesus. Because what this story revealed for them as fishermen, and they knew fish, and what this story revealed to the people who Luke is preaching to and who they're reading the gospel to and who Luke is telling us today this morning, is this story reveals the miraculous power of Jesus the Christ, that this power is available to Christ followers. That's what Luke wants us to know. That's the miracle. On this Sea of Galilee 2,000 years ago, it was made available to these fishermen. And we have to remember, because Paul tells us so, that scripture is not just history. It's not just a recording of facts so we can go, oh, that's a nice story. But remember what Paul says in Romans. Paul tells the church in Rome, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he says. Why? Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. That's what the word of God is. That's what the power of God is. And this power then and now is present and real to us today now. How do I know that? Well, we heard the word of God. We didn't just hear a historical reading of something that happened, but we heard about the power of Jesus the Christ now. Jesus speaks to us today in that word. We also will know the power of the Christ because we, in a moment, will eat of the bread and wine of this table that we believe through the power of the Holy Spirit becomes for us the body and blood of Christ. Now, some of you know that before I felt a call to enter ministry, I was pre-med. As pre-med, I was working at Santa Monica Hospital Medical Center, and in the medical profession there, as someone who is being trained up by them, the mantra was, see one, do one, teach one. And this is what these evangelists are doing. They see one. They see the miracle of the abundance of the outrageous wondrous catch. They see this miracle full of abundance and grace. They then leave everything to follow Jesus. They immediately reorder their entire lives with Jesus at the center of everything they now decide to do. And they give up their fears and they trust in God. And then they will go forward and we will be told as we continue to read in Luke and Acts that these Christ followers, these Evangelion people, they will do miracles as well. And then they will use those moments to teach others about the love of God in Jesus the Christ. So today, as we hear this story in our telling, we remember the power of God. We remember that power comes to us by God. It comes to us in at least three ways. One, in the very fact that we are created in the image of God, the imagio dei. That's where the power of God begins in us. It comes to us as Christ followers in our baptism, where we are anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, sealed as Christ's own forever, and given a ministry, a job to do 
to go and tell others about Jesus. And we are filled and given this power of God in the bread and wine, the body and blood of the Holy Eucharist. And this power can, will, and does come to us each and every day. We can be assured that it'll come to us in our joy and in our pain. We can be assured that it will come to us in our struggles and our successes. It will come to us when we feel hopeless and it will come to us when we feel hopeful. Simply put, what Luke wants us to know in this story and through the power of God in Christ, that this power allows us to become the people that God created us to be. Listen again to the call of Jesus the Christ. Go ahead, Mark. Put out into the deep water. Let down your nets for a catch. From now on, don't worry. Don't be afraid. You'll be catching people. To me, to you, and to all of us. God's power is in us. Don't be afraid. This is good news. This is evangelism. This power, we can withstand pain and torment. We can revel in joy and bliss. We can endure great trials. We can face new challenges. And we are told we can even overcome death. We can help heal a world that suffers and hurts. And we can live trusting that God will provide us with all that we really need. See one, do one, teach one. Then we invite people to join us in telling more and more people of the miraculous power of God. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, amen. Sisters and brothers, wholeheartedly give thanks to the Lord. Trusting in our great creator, let us pray. Ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. Bless the people of your church, O lover of souls. Call us greater the devotion of service. Fan the flame of the Holy Spirit within us, that we might set ablaze with the fire of your love. Ever living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. Make known your ways of justice and truth, Almighty God. Bring the powers of this world to their knees and establish your kingdom of peace on the earth. 
ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. Loving creator, do not abandon the works of your hands. Sustain this planet and all its creatures. Give us creative minds and a generous heart as we live and move within your creation. Ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. We thank you for the communities in which we live and work and worship. Make us witnesses of your love and faithfulness. Ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. O Lord, you care for the lowly. You hear our cries for mercy. You increase the strength of our weak. We offer your prayers for those in need of your healing and your grace. Ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. Gracious God, your love endures forever, and so we pray for those who have died, trusting them in your everlasting care. Shannon and David. Ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray, ever-living God, inspire us with new life. Inspire us with your light. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming and glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Mary Magdalene and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray in our chosen language and voice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, alleluia, is the communion of the body of Christ. One body are we, alleluia, for though many we share one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Again, it was great to have you worshiping with us. Be assured of God's blessings on your life. Amen. Amen.